this is one of those stories, like I said a moment ago, it's one of those, why has nobody done anything about this before moment? Um, lying on a toilet floor, it's not something you should subject anybody to. Everybody needs uh, a bit of, uh, of dignity. And that is what happens in some cases to people who um, are a little bit older than babies who need to be changed. To tell us a little bit more about it, uh, I'm joined in the studio by Emily Naismith uh, from Warwick. Morning, Emily. Thank you so much for coming in. Tell us about the No More Floor campaign. I tell you, I lament the lack of changing facilities generally. It must be so hard, though, for, for older children and young adults. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so about 18 months ago, myself and another mum of a disabled um, boy, Ben, got together. Francesca and I kind of p- put our heads together and, and said, you know, where are the facilities? And the an- the resounding answer was there isn't one. So I got to the a point where she was about four, Chloe. Um, Chloe's Alice- your daughter. Chloe's my daughter. And she's got cerebral palsy. She has cerebral palsy. So she was born um, 12 weeks early, has cerebral palsy as a result of um, of that. And so often is the case now, a lot more premature babies are surviving, thankfully, um, t- to, um, you know, the way hospitals deal with their premature babies now. But as a result of that, a lot of children do end up with things like cerebral palsy. Um So when I met Francesca and I found that people were bringing horse boxes into town or bringing them into town and having to lay them on disabled toilet floors because that was the only option, it was just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that was the option open to us. It, it's it's a horrible thing. It, it's not, you know, my um, niece um, at the time was two, I think, two and a half. And I remember being at a park in rugby, trying desperately to find somewhere to change a nappy. And it, there, there were paid toilets. So I paid to get into one toilet in the hope that there were some facilities in there. And there weren't. And she went to lie down on the floor. I was like, no, darling, no, I'm not having that. And that, even now, the picture of that in my head of my little niece going to lie down on a filthy floor. And that's a reality that you've got on a, on a daily basis it's it's just ridiculous that you're forced to do this yeah absolutely crazy you know there's a quarter of a million disabled people so for the facilities aren't just for children it's for young adults as well um you know to have these facilities i mean i think at the latest count up there was 11 we're just close to 1100 toilets for a quarter of a million people that need these facilities it's just not enough. Now you've managed to get thirty. Is it thirty-eight thousand pounds to open an accessible changing room in Leamington? Yeah. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we opened our changing place in Leamington, um, and it's absolutely fantastic. I've had so many messages of support and thanks to say thank you so much for opening this facility. We can now come to Leamington. What? So what? What do you get? What, what do you get for the money? What? What? Describe what's in there. Okay. So basically, um, I mean, the the main reason you know that I want to make people aware is if you're building a new facility it's so much cheaper to put this facility in as you're building so the reason it's cost as much as it has is because it's had to be retrofitted sure. into a into a building but basically there's a high height adjustable bed uh, two track hoist so you can hoist some ch- some adults and children need hoisting onto the toilet for example or they might just need ho- adjust um hoisting onto the bench um so there's that and there's also a high low sink in there um and it's just basically a space to be able to get a wheelchair and two carers in if you need to you know it in a normal disabled toilet there's just not that room no and and this what what a difference this will make to to chloe your daughter and to other people so what we you're trying to do is to try and get more and more people to do this more places to do this so there's a big there's a campaign going on isn't there to try and raise awareness um of this uh, no more floor and um to to raise awareness of this problem i love this you're you're staging a what a toilet sitting well, um, a friend, a friend that I've come across through this Changing Places campaign, uh, Sarah Brisdian, is having a Louathon. <laughs> okay, well, look, I think we should all be having more Louathons. Sarah joins us on the line now. Good morning, Sarah. Hello. Good morning, and Emily can hear you as well, which is uh, which is nice and helpful too. So, tell us about your uh, your Louathon. What are you doing? Yes, it sounds a bit bonkers, doesn't it? Um, I've been campaigning, like Emily, in my locality for a long time now. 
Um, but I have a very similar story. My son was also born um, 12 weeks premature, um, had cerebral palsy, is a full-time wheelchair user. So he has um, pretty much the same needs as Chloe. Um, so I've been doing this for a while and I have been very lucky that lots of people have been helping and trying to support me. And we've had an offer from um, a lovely uh, bath and toilet company um, to let us sit um, in their shop window, basically, on the toilet. So um, sit, sitting on the loo. In... Day. Wow. Wow. So you'll be yeah. sitting on the loo in a shop window for a whole day. Um, and what are you hoping this will make people do? We, we just want to raise awareness, essentially, um, and obviously get some media coverage. It's going to be quite unusual for people to walk down the high street and see us sat pants down in the window. <laughs> in um, London. In London, yeah, exactly. So it's just really a way of trying to show everyone that, one, we, know we all need to pee. Everyone has to do it. You, know, you can't get away without peeing in some way, shape or form. But lots of people need a bit of extra help. Um, and it's just not happening. We're not getting enough support. We're not getting enough businesses saying, yes, we need to install these facilities. So, unfortunately, parents like Emily and I have to take quite drastic measures to to help make them see the light. It's such it's such a fundamental thing to be afforded a little bit of dignity um, at, 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 with something that everybody needs to go through. I, I would imagine that what you're doing is so useful because it raises awareness, Emily, because this isn't something that had ever occurred to me before I heard, out, heard about what you'd done. No, absolutely. I guess it's just a case of, you know, unless something happens to you, you don't realise it's going on. Um, a lot of the people I spoke to when I approached them um, said I had no idea you know I think people you know me included live in a kind of bubble you don't expect an 18 year old man to be in continence products and like a 40 year old woman having to lift that said 18 year old man onto the floor to change those continence products so unless you're kind of in that situation you just don't think about it so yeah along with Sarah and many many others we're going to be campaigning until we get these facilities put in into places how are you feeling about sitting in a uh, in a shop window on the loo uh yeah nervous <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine it'll just it'll be it's that psychological thing what happens if you get caught short and it's just that there might be a temptation there so be, be wary of that but you're hoping this is something that will be taken seriously sarah has there been much of a reaction from the powers that be yeah, and there has. Um, it, it, we're slowly getting traction. And since I did a, I did a similar thing over Christmas, and I took a, a toilet selfie every day over Christmas and posted it on social media, which got a lot of people talking. And that's kind of where this Lewathon has come. Um, we're taking it to a bit of another level. Um, people are starting to come up, and businesses are contacting us and saying we hadn't heard about this. You know, what do we need to do? So we are, we are slowly getting there. Um, but it's still, I think there's still such a long way to go. We've got to keep our foot on the gas, really. Absolutely. Well, I wish you the very best of it, because this is the only loo like this I've heard of, the one in Leamington. Is it the only one that's local? Um, the, we've got one in Leamington, one in Warwick. There are quite a few, but Warwickshire is um, not got as many as a lot of other locations. We need them. It's as simple as that. It's such a, as a simple thing that would make such a massive difference to loads of lives. Emily, thank you for joining us today on the show and to, uh, to Sarah as well. Very best to look with the campaign.